presenting. No. You're on. Drum roll, please. Okay. So I've started this um, canvas a little bit so I could get a little further along in my demo. It has the texture medium. I've sanded it. I usually start with a darker um, base in some places just so I can start working in a little depth with the color. And then it was very difficult for me to narrow my colors down to bring because it's really an intuitive process. It's what am I feeling right then? What, what does this look like it needs? And so I have just a, a rolling caddy full of um, paints. I really enjoy the golden fluid acrylics. Um, in fact, any paint from golden, I'm a fan of. They're high flow, they're, um, excuse me, my daughter calling. Um, but anyway, so I'm using golden, and this is a, one of my favorite colors. What is that color? This is a, I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce it correctly. Quinacridone or quinacridone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nickel azo gold. Indian yellow hue is another one of my favorites. Van Dyke brown, I can't get enough of. I love that color. I've fallen in love with Australian Sienna from Matisse. Um, make sure I'm rolling around here. Yeah. Really like that brand a lot. <clears throat> okay, so right now I started with that Van Dyke Brown and I just swashed in a whole bunch of it all over the place. And then I've started going in with that uh, Quinecridone Nicolazo Gold. I like to mix that with Titanium white. You know what? You're getting a little bit of a glare tipping your camera, so either less or more. Yeah. Is that okay? Remove the water yeah. because it's blocking your palette completely. Um. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Don't stand. Would you like a chair, Christine? Yeah. Would you like a chair for that? That'd be great, actually. Yeah. Can you see that better? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So, Thanks. just. Mm -hmm madly brushing color on yeah thank you and right now I'm not really concerned with um, oh that that color doesn't look good or that's that's making a little bit of mud that that doesn't bother me right now it's more about as I'm layering if I have a little piece that I like, yeah, I might not want to cover that part up, but I really like the unexpected little surprises that happen as You're I'm... not thinking about the composition, outcome, anything. <laughs> no, not right now. Most of the time, I don't even know what animal or if it's going to be flowers or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just... And it's very freeing for me mm -hmm. right now. Sometimes I think, oh, you know, maybe I should just keep this an abstract. And occasionally I do, but not normally. And I have learned also to start painting my edges as I go. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten all of these really cool little patterns and textures and everything and then gone, oh, I didn't paint the edges. And then I have to try to go back and um, match it. But you paint right out of the, out of the tube, you don't mix. Yeah, um, I mix a little bit, but for the most part, um, I don't limit myself to just two or three colors if, you know, that's what you're, yeah. you're asking. I, I go ahead and just use them all. And then when you're moving on to the, like an animal or a flower, are you looking at any reference? Yes, and I want to talk about that too. I'm glad you asked that. I belong to, and some of you may also belong to this on Facebook, a group called Free Reference Photos for Artists. And it is a group of photographers that um, donate their photos. And they don't care if you sell your work using the image. It's a fantastic group. And you said it's on Facebook? Or yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a Facebook group. Oh. Free reference photos for artists. 
So here is, let me pull up the image that I was using for my um, little fox painting here. I have so many albums, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Maybe I'll stand him up. May I stand him up? Mm -hmm. I can you can pass here. that one around if you want. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do that. Is this one of It's all the gold on mm -hmm. here, gold leaf. But this isn't yours. It's one of the this is one of the, the reference photos. Ah. So when you do that, for example, if you were to pick that one, would you be doing it almost exactly? No. no. Oh, no. that's the this example. Is it. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. It's a reference. Yeah, it's just it's just as a reference, and um, oh, that's a good idea. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, I um, I have done this going. I might be showing you the other reference because I flipped him yeah. one time because I wanted to to mm -hmm. see him from going the other direction. Foxes have been something oh, I've yes, been correct. very attracted to since we lived in Colorado. We were camping, and my husband snapped a photo of a fox walking through our um, campsite, and it had paused to sniff some flowers. Uh -huh. And I painted that image. I've painted it so many times. It's kind of crazy. Um, but I also wanted to show you the um, piece that's up here that's uh, the flowers. I think that's the flowers. Mm -hmm. This is what it started off as. Oh, wow. <laughs> so just lots of color, lots of texture, and then, you know, I just started looking at it and it, it just seemed like a, a floral to me. So I'm going to do a part here, in fact I've done a sum of it, that I think maybe I want to knock that back a little bit, and I probably would actually save this until a little later in the process, but I want to show you how I do it. <clears throat> I use Van Dyke Brown and the Quanacridone Nicolazo Gold and Liquitex Glazing Medium. How is it different from a matte medium or that medium? Or it's a little more glossy. I think you can do the same thing with a matte medium. With, with mediums? Yeah. And I can even thin it a little bit with water if I want it even a little mm -hmm. thinner. But for the most part, I try to stick with um, mediums. So I just brush oh, this yeah. over it, and it immediately takes that back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then oh, wow. just swipe that off. Yeah. I want a little bit more, and really I should, I've learned that I need to wait until this is more dry mm -hmm. to go back over it, otherwise it gets kind of rough, <coughs> so I'll look at another spot here with the brown. I just love Van Dyke Brown. Going back a bit, do you have any trouble using your sander on canvas? No, I just am really careful not to press too hard with it or stay too long on one spot. Okay. Use the power sander on the canvas? Yeah, <laughs> especially on the bigger ones. Um, and the one place that I do make sure I'm very careful is I don't put texture medium on the sides. I just try to make sure that when I'm um, applying it that I sort of wrap it just a little bit and then I sand along here so I don't have too much of a sharp edge between the top and the side. That place, you have to be careful or you might zip into the just gessoed part. Okay, so that's what I do if I want to knock a, a part down a little bit and back it off some. I really enjoy using stencils. Hmm, pick a color that's really going to show up good here. Well, 
What's your palette safer than? I use um, Gray Matters a paper palette as my <coughs> palette. This is awesome. I used so much of this um, kind of very loose burlapy type um, fabric for making textures just with the paint, but also when the texture medium is wet, you can either fully embed it and that can become part of your mixed media work, or you can embed it and then pull it out and it leaves a great texture. Wow. So it's... Do you buy pieces of that or I mean, that can be like from a poop, you know how you get oranges in there? Yeah. Yeah, you can use any anything that will, you know, yeah, I, I buy special stuff, but at the same time, I'm always looking for just little odds and ends that will make some sort of neat texture. And you can also make your, you probably know this too, your own um, little yeah. stamps using the self-sticky soft foam and a piece of cardboard, and sometimes I do that too. That's mostly when I'm doing collage papers. I would say collage works great for the environment. Oh, yeah. Everything ends up in the box. Yes, it does. Oh, yeah. So it's just, right now, it's just all about the textures. Mm -hmm. It's layering the colors, the textures, letting some show, covering some up. Um, and that's just the fun of the process, and that's, I'm really enjoying it. When I do feel like it gets, you know, probably three quarters of the way finished, where I, I could go ahead and finish it as a abstract painting or turn down the other road and start um, working on my animal or floral or whatever it is that I'm seeing. Um, stop, let it dry. Speaking of drying, it dries so fast. That's what some people really hate about acrylics. It's just how fast they dry. My dad can't really paint with oils anymore. He's, he's turning 90 this oh, wow. summer. And so the fumes, the smells really have gotten to him. Mm -hmm. So I've tried to, and my sister too, has tried to get him to try um, these um, open acrylics. They don't handle like he's used to, so... He starts and kind of lets it sit on the easel for a while. And I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. Okay, so let's just pretend that this is three quarters of the way finished. Then I start looking at it and thinking, I'm having to really use my imagination here because I'm not seeing a whole lot right now. But um, does it look like maybe that there's some flowers? Does it seem like it's a bird? Is it going to be? What kind of animal is it? And then that's where I start looking at my... Uh, collection of reference photos and just deciding what you know what is it that I'm I'm seeing here maybe it's going to be these these cows at least one of them so mm -hmm. and then I use a chalk pencil I have really found that it's so much easier see if I can find a space here let's just say I'm going to draw like a really abstract flower and then I follow the outline of it and then if I wipe it right now it's going to leave a little ghost line which I think is kind of cool looking but if I let it dry and I get this damp then it just completely erases my chalk line so just a just a little tip there. So are you having any questions that I can be answering? I'm kind of just flying through this because I want to show you as much as I can. Do you work on multiple pieces at once? I do. I do. Um, my studio has, it's a bedroom, an extra bedroom we had in the house. And so I've got two easels. And as I'm working, I'll have the one on the easel usually there's a couple drying up on the little side bars of it 
one or two on the other easel so I'm just sort of constantly rotating things around and that's what I did with those little um, the the pig the llama the um, I can't think of what the other one was the donkey mm -hmm. I had when I was at that uh, artist in action and Anne Marie I had all of them laid out on a table I was working on five of those at a time this one and um, two other ones that I have at home sorry so I just had them all out and just rotate through and it helps you know to have some unity in my work also because mm -hmm. then I'm using the same colors somewhat the same colors is all of your gold gold leaf um, or is it some of it gold paint some of it is gold paint okay. I have found that if I want to try to control it a little bit more mm -hmm. and do any sort of design work with it then I use a paint pen because I have a hard time not letting the gold leaf feather. So I called a product expert at Dick Glick and I asked about this brand, Pin Touch. And it's archival and it's rated for professional use. Yeah, it's a pen. And I love it. And so I. I might decide just to do some little droplet kind of yeah. things on it. And then I don't mind, you know, I might be doing this during the process of it. Gold leaf has to, it's the last thing I do if I'm going to mm -hmm. add yeah. gold leaf to it. Yeah, you, you don't want to layer on top of gold leaf. <laughs> right. Right. So, about my gold leaf. I dabble in oil paints, but not very much. If I'm going to do a, an oil painting, it's going to be small, and then I usually use genuine gold leaf. But that's so expensive. It's cost prohibitive to do on the number of paintings that I'm doing, and I would have to charge an arm and a leg. So I use Mona Lisa brand. Well, it's Speedball, but it's the Mona Lisa Simple Leaf. It's not genuine gold leaf, but if you seal it and you do it properly, you'd be hard pressed to really see the difference unless you're comparing the real thing side by side. Obviously, genuine gold leaf has got a luster that you're not gonna get with composite, but this is super easy to use because it's held onto this little wax sheet with static. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you use an adhesive size, which is just a, it's like a thin glue. It goes on milky white and then it dries clear and it's tacky and sticky. And you can see it where it is because it's shiny when it's dry. I think I've actually covered up all of my gold leaf adhesive on this but everywhere there was a little dot it was just a shiny little sticky and then I go in with this Tip it up a little bit. and I lay it on top of it and I press it and then everywhere there's a sticky dot it removes it from the sheet so it's super easy um, you'll have little bits of it all over the place and then I just I oh I didn't tell you I just use a, a paintbrush that I dip in that's the sealer that won't work and it is sticky once it dries I mean once you open it it it's everywhere but it's just what is that called this is adhesive size and Mona Lisa makes a... Yeah, the brand is Speedball. Okay. But it's Mona Lisa. And so it just goes on... How fast does it dry? Depends on how thick you put the okay. adhesive. Usually my dots, um, a small dot like this, might be dry to the touch in three or four hours. But if I do a lot on there, I leave it for 24 hours mm -hmm. just to make sure. Because if it's not completely clear and dry, then it will, and you put your gold leaf on it, it seems like it will stay tacky forever. 
But if you wait until it's fully dry and then you put the leaf on, it's fine. And, and the fact that it becomes transparent is what lets you know it's dry. Yeah, it okay. changes from being this milky white. So when it's fully clear, See. transparent, it's ready right. to, to adhere to the leaf mm -hmm. fully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've made the mistake early when I was using it in my art of doing it too fast and there were some and I didn't those pieces I didn't sell but um, it's like those gold dots never cured they never stopped being sticky even after sealing them and speaking of sealer you need to apply some sort of a sealer to it otherwise it will um, tarnish or the color will dull so if you apply uh, this sealer on top of it then you're golden. It, you know, you're applying the <laughs> sealer just to the gold leaf or to the whole? You can do it both ways. So you can, if you have just some little spots, just use this. If you, and this I call the expert again. I said, can I just use my varnish and seal this at the same time? And he said, absolutely. So you can skip that step. I wish I'd asked that years yeah, before, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't think of it until fairly recently. So I use a Liquitex gloss varnish on my acrylic paintings, and it seals the gold leaf, and it gives everything a fairly even sheen, and then you don't have to use the sealer. If you use genuine gold leaf, you don't have to use any sealer at all. But. As I said, it's expensive. Okay, so um, now I, my paint is probably dry on my little flower. I'll go back and I'll erase my chalk lines. And then I can start painting in. Might help if I wash my brush. Oh, back to I'm, I'm thinking of things I need to, to tell you because my you know my video didn't work so now I have to remember everything I was going to tell you okay. on that flexible mold modeling paste whatever's left on your palette knife don't just go wash that down your drain you need to, to either scrape it back into your bucket to reuse again or you need to wipe it off with a paper towel because it will build up in your drain <laughs> eventually <laughs> this stuff gets hard you can as I said you can sand it and if you you're using the stuff that's the um, that's not the flexible man you can build up big textures and you know all kinds of things with it but it will do a number on your plumbing and ours is old so I also really like to let some of my abstract show through mm -hmm. when I can. Mm -hmm. In fact, the when I was getting ready for this spotlight exhibit and I was painting that moose, it struck me that It looked really neat because I saw it with the antlers, and I really liked the way that looked. And then it, it sort of became a theme of the animal is part of the environment, the environment is part of the animal. Mm -hmm. So it was very a symbiotic kind of relationship between the background and the, the animals. So that became my guiding principle with the rest of the pieces I did. So I might just leave that like it is. And if you're a floral painter, then please, mine are just very abstract and loose. And I'm not, most of them, I couldn't tell you exactly what kind of flower it's supposed to be. They're just flower-esque, <laughs> sort of poppies, sort of peonies. 
maybe a ranunculus-like <laughs> flower. Okay, um, do you have any questions or do you want to just come up and, oh, I, I do want to show you one other thing. I like to show as many of my materials as I can. I like Posca markers. They're awesome. These two are archival and and they're acrylic paint. They're not ink. The Posca is. So P O S C A. But they've got really bold colors. And they're just, they're great fun. So they come in these really um, broad tipped ones and also super fine. And they're acrylic paint. They're expensive, but. Yeah, but I've been using the same ones. Unless you, you know, I, I don't use it for that much in a piece. So they've lasted me a really long time. And I've found that you can get them on Amazon. Um, Dick Blick. Mm -hmm. I don't remember if Jerry's has them or not, but those are my two main art supply. Really, Dick Blick is my favorite. Yeah. I like to come to the local shop here in um, Rochester also when I'm in town. I don't really have access in Bath to a, a good art supply. Yeah. Yeah. So, and sometimes I just use my... Plopper. Plopper. That's a good good name for it. My plopper. Okay. Uh, love the way the we've got the very variety of uh, uh, color in that on uh, the sponge there. The yeah, pur with that's the purple and the white. It makes it gives it a real dimension. Yeah, that's one of the things I like about that too. So I use that quite a bit, and I use that little um, stencil. I like this one a lot. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to paint an animal and I need fur, I have notched paint brushes oh, wow. oh, that wow. I use for that. Now, did you make that notched paintbrush? No, I, I found it on, um, I think it was Dick Blick. Oh, wow. Very cool. And it, they, it, I have different widths. I have some that are smaller and some that are wider. And, and then you can use it too just for... <laughs> texture in your work. Try not to jump on my glue dot. Yeah. Do you ever <laughs> get concerned when you're doing that first part that it might get too busy mm -hmm. and then you can't paint over it necessarily? And some colors are more translucent. Yeah, um, I have felt that some of my pieces have gotten a little busy, like in retrospect. The bison, I felt like, was a little bit busy in the background, and I would have preferred to go back and paint over some of that. So what I do is, if I decide that there's just a, it's just too busy. In fact, a, a raven I've been working on has, has been giving me fits because it was too busy. I just go in and pick a color. And I might use my glaze some. And I just paint over it. No! Oh, <laughs> so then I can knock it back, you know, and it's it's not so busy anymore. And then uh, honestly I like the way that looks now. You know, just sort of mm -hmm. the other stuff is peeking out. It's a little <laughs> hazy. It's a little cloudy. Um, it's doing something like this is about really creating contrast, mm -hmm. so that you don't want your your colors to get. You know, if if I use too many browns on top of each other, you can't really see all the different right. design elements to it. Some tiny little dots there might be almost dry to show you the gold leaf because I didn't put very much on it right there. So I'm going to keep painting just for a little bit more and see if maybe <laughs> and I also like to scratch through 
Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> and would you mind just switching it around so we could, you know? Yeah. Do you ever end up flipping them, you know, start out one direction and then turn around? Yeah. Absolutely. We think about that all the time. Turn around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true though. I, I do that quite a bit. And then something else that I like to use, this one may not have very much texture left in it, but I like to use my paper towel to create, uh, trying not to make anything too muddy here, but let's just put this on here. And it's subtle, but it gives you that little polka dot. Oh, yeah. 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 You have to make sure you have the right kind of paper towel that yeah. doesn't have weird in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or <Flowers>. bounty <laughs> <laughs> written through it. Yeah. Well, unless you want it, you know. You want to pull in some text. And you're a harvest piece. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Any other questions? Is that an extender? Uh, that white... That she just yeah, squirted on there? That out. is my titanium white. Oh, okay. um, I didn't, I have a plethora of mediums that I did not bring, but I have extenders. I found that I don't really, the only one I really like is one that's just an acrylic polymer medium. It's just, you know, it's it's what is, the paint is made with without the color. That's oh, the, okay. And that's the one I like, and it's by the Golden. Mediums. Yeah. Yeah. So I really like that one quite a bit, and um Otherwise, my varnishes are Liquitex, but most of my other products are golden. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the, um, flexible molding paste was Liquitex. Do you ever think to scratch your signature in like that instead of painting it? That's a good idea. No, I haven't done that. One time, though, I and I ended up really liking it. I left my thumbprint in my texture medium on the side, and I'm like, well, that is a really unique way of yeah, signing is. my work. Yeah. <laughs> Very unique. No one can say, no, that's my thumbprint. <laughs> I really started doing this, um, as I said, because I would forget and then I'd have to match it. But also, I hate painting edges. Like, I started off painting them black. Mm -hmm. I hate doing that. It's just one of those, I don't know. I've always said it's like scrubbing toilets for me. It's like, just you have to do it, but it's just a, I don't want to do it. Yeah. So, yeah, I want to move on to something else. You yeah. know, I'm, I finished the, the fun part and then I want to do something different. But I've also found that I really like wrapping the design mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. it and, and people have really enjoyed that as well. It's like four separate mini canvases. Mm -hmm. yeah. Over them. yeah. So, and it goes pretty fast when I'm doing it this way and I don't have to worry so much about, you know, making sure it doesn't accidentally get on the front exactly. of the painting and it's all oh, yeah. basically done at the same time yeah that's kind of fun you end up framing your pieces for the shows you put your work in no, no. these uh, and that's another reason i make sure i paint the edges right. because i i don't want to frame i started framing um when i did collage and other things and i found people pitch my frame and yeah. Yeah. then that was just an expense yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's when I started uh, just doing the edges. Well, thank you all so much for having me. And if you want to come up and take a look at any of this close, thank you. Thank you.